Hi, I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge and hypnosisdownloads.com and welcome to How to Stop Compulsive Lying, Seven Tips to Stop You Getting Caught in Your Own Tangled Web. What's wrong with me? I can never seem to tell the truth. I'm a compulsive liar. Thank you for being honest with me. And I presume she was being at that point. And it turns out Claire, who was a client, had lied since she'd been little and recently she'd lied at work telling everyone she was terminally ill with cancer and she'd got a huge amount of sympathy and attention for that not to mention extended time off from work and now she'd been found out and fired I'm lucky not, not to have uh, criminal proceedings against her and in her time she'd lied about knowing famous people that she didn't winning money which she hadn't and not cheating on or having stolen from boyfriends both of which she had now, Claire felt that she'd burnt all her bridges. Friends had fled and work opportunities dried up. She was desperate to stop compulsively lying and have a fresh start somewhere new. So, do you lie? Compulsive lying and the art of diplomacy. So I'm not talking about those everyday little pieces of expediency most of us indulge in, you know. How do I look, thinks, like a trussed up bag of festering turnips, says, you look fantastic. And perhaps the most common lie. Okay. How are you? Fine, whilst thinking, ready to leap under a tram. Okay. So white lies, if you like, smooth life because brutal frankness and long-term friendship make for uneasy bedfellows. Neither am I talking about unconscious dishonesty or cognitive dissonance in which we kid ourselves. I'm talking about compulsive and purposeful lying, the kind that tangles you up and eventually and inevitably gets sussed out. So if that kind of lying is a problem, then there are things you can do to stop the compulsive liar in you from rearing its ugly head. But first, let's have a look at what causes compulsive lying. So there are many reasons why someone might compulsively lie. Claire lied to get attention, to feel special. She had often lied that she was ill. Okay, a very quick way of getting attention. This is sometimes known as Munchausen syndrome. See reference one. A condition in which the sufferer feigns disease, an illness or injury, in order to gain other uh, benefits, either material advantages or attention, attention from other people. As a child, she'd felt pushed out of the fold when her younger siblings had come along. She'd started lying to classmates and her parents very early on. So people lie because they behave badly but want to still look good, as with the politician who's had an affair or cheats on his expense account, then lies in an attempt to cover it up. Okay, Westminster, anyone? Uh, to genuinely save someone else's feelings, to control other people. People may lie about how much power status they have and then threaten people with the fictitious power and influence which they've lied about. For self-aggrandizement, in order to make themselves appear wonderful, especially gifted or more interesting or exciting, either through a sense of inadequacy or overly high self-esteem. Through sheer force of habit, lying is as easy as breathing for me. Because you're here, I'm presuming you're sick of compulsively lying. So here are some ideas to help you start being more honest, more real. So number one, to thine own self be true, regardless of what others are doing. A few years ago, there was an expenses scandal in the UK amongst politicians, and many cheating politicians defended their own public money pocketing by protesting that, well, everyone else has been doing it. Okay. In some ways, lying has become more accepted and even expected in public figures. In a recent survey in the UK, 41% of people said they would cash a winning lottery ticket even if it didn't belong to them. And more than two thirds of people have stolen stationery from work, see reference two. So you know what is honest, so be honest, regardless of a dishonest group or think culture. Don't hide behind the excuse of widespread lying. Everyone's bad, so I can be bad. Two, remember the truth is often easier. 
always tell the truth, that way you don't have to remember what you said. As Mark Twain said, lying is a real strain. You have to remember so much and no matter how uh, elaborate your twisting and turning, you'll eventually come unstuck. As Claire said on one of our sessions, you know it's a relief not to lie. Cast off lying and you'll find life instantly becomes much less stressful. Number three, know what lying is. It's so easy to lie to ourselves about what lying is. Not telling the truth and remaining silent is a form of lying, lying through omission. In the same way, people may assume that uh, failing to do the right thing is not the same as doing the wrong thing. In one recent research study in the UK, just 38% of items deliberately left in the street for the study found their way back to their rightful owners. See reference three. So Claire told me that one boyfriend had asked her why she hadn't told him she cheated on him. And she replied, because you didn't ask. So don't make excuses to yourself. Not telling the truth when you know what it is, is a form of lying. Number four, stop compulsive lying to protect your reputation because the truth is out there. Apart from all the ethical considerations, lying doesn't work, not in the long run. Once you're unmasked as a habitual liar, you've blown it. People will take you far less seriously as a person. You almost become a a non-entity. Trust may be impossible to ever win back. As good old honest Abe Lincoln said, if you once forfeit the confidence of your fellow citizens, you can never regain their respect and esteem. Claire had destroyed the confidence of just about everyone and felt forced to move on to new pastures. Stop and think. The truth has a way of making itself known. And when you lose people's trust, you lose the power to be heard by other people because they'll stop listening. Truth is always looking for you. So remember what happened to the boy who cried wolf. Number five, stop compulsive lying one step at a time. Claire had been lying for decades, all the time, every day, and she was good at lying, which hadn't stopped the truth from making itself known to the people in her life. I asked her to start telling small truths, being honest here and there when normally she wouldn't be. Okay, for example, when she spoke to someone new, she was to tell uh, that she'd left school and become a head- hairdresser at 16 instead of her usual story of having picked up a master's degree in marine biology. She was also to tell people her real town of origin and be honest about her parents, dropping the story of being adopted. And bit by bit, I encouraged her to start to tell small truths so truth-telling in itself could become a habit. Start by promising to yourself you'll tell people three true things about yourself a day okay, and build up. Number six, stop compulsive lying by meeting your emotional needs honestly. Much human behavior is unconsciously motivated by the need to meet emotional needs. We all have needs for a sense of safety and security, attention from other people, status, meaning in our lives, of course, excitement, intimacy and love, connection to others and self-esteem and so forth. Now think about times when you've compulsively lied times when the lies seem to come from nowhere. What was the drive behind the lying? Wanting to be included in the group? Wanting to be thought highly of? Wanting to be loved even? Wanting excitement? Really think about what was the drive, what need was trying to be met. Lying to get your life needs met is a form of stealing. Wanting to gain love, respect from others or self-esteem without putting in real efforts is theft in a way. Think about some real ways in which you can honestly meet these needs for self-importance or security or whatever drive you've been uh, trying to meet through the lying. And make these the basis from which you interact with other people. Number seven, use self-hypnosis to stop compulsive lying. For Claire, lying had come to feel a part of who she was. She called it instinctive. So we worked hypnotically to great effect. I got her to hypnotically experience a type of situation in which she'd been typically tempted to tell a whopper and I helped her mentally rehearse telling the truth regardless of whether it was less colorful or exciting. Each time she did this, she felt an enormous flood of 
relief and felt closer to the person with whom she was communicating. Claire emailed me months later to tell me that her new real life was going well and that 90% of the time I'm telling the truth and I'm getting more honest all the time and it feels natural now. And of course, she could have been lying to me, but I chose to believe her. So I hope you found these uh, ideas useful and if you did, please hit like and subscribe. And if you want to hear when my next video is published, hit the notification bell below. I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge and hypnosisdownloads.com and if you'd like to try some of my personal development products, head over to hypnosisdownloads.com and take a look around. And thanks for watching.